Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm George from HighTarget. Today, we are going to talk about uh, three best goal functions of Hathaway with three parts. The part one is about echo tools in detail survey page. How to make full use of the echo tools in the detail survey page. And part two is about how to use quasi dynamic survey. And part three, tier survey. Okay, let's talk about the echo tools first. Most of the icons are shown on the left and the right and the right toolbar. And there are two kinds of detail survey value, graph value and the test value. They can switch to each other easily. And uh, look at the picture four. For the meaning of the uh, for the meaning of each icon, just long press the icon and there will show a small window to tell the function. Okay, go back to the icons. On the left toolbar, top four are zoom in, zoom out, zoom center, and zoom out. These are operations for map. Navigation means the software will switch to Google Maps to enter navigation mode. Attribute info means you can check attribute of each icons. Uh, check uh, check attributes of each points, lines, and polygons. Control direction means the software will treat the control as the forwarding direction, not the receiver. Okay. Right to bar includes different kind of server methods, such as intersection, average, out of the way, and a single stop point, and a PPK collection. Hathaway also supports collect lines and polygons by culture create. Tier survey can be switched on and switched off here is a quick button. Of course, echoes can be expand and hide. So most of the necessary and the important echoes are here. And generally some echoes are not often used and not needed. And echoes order is not good for the user, so they can edit order and uh, delete the echo if they want. Also, they can reset it to the default. Icons not only can be used by screen touch, also can be used by control physical buttons. For example, users can press button one to zoom in, Apple, uh, zoom in map and button two to zoom out the map. The physical buttons also can be used for quick code. After define the quick, uh, quick code of each button, physical button one to line can be used to store points with corresponding defined quick code. And this function will greatly improve work efficiency. Okay, one more thing. On detail server page, Users can press the menu button to enter some often used functions directory, such as project setting, a point library, row data, and base and lower setting. Okay, so much for this topic. Uh, this is poll for you. Please spare one minute to vote.
फोटो ये बंद कर खाने दीजिए结束，可以关闭，可以共享。Okay, seems like most people uh like uh, screen touch and the physical button both. Okay, thanks for your vote. Now let's talk about part two, quasi dynamic survey. Doing field survey in the heavy sheltered circumstances is a nightmare for surveyors because there will be so many problems. For example, receiver will get fewer satellites, more noise, more serious mounting pace, and the general signal is not stable. And also the receiver will get a low RDK fixed rate, more drum points, accuracy is not stable. The coordinates is not correct, even if get RDK fixed. As you see, the data quality between two circumstances, under shared circumstances, the satellite number is fewer and unstable. SNR and Monty Pace looks terrible. Quasi dynamic is using algorithms, which is developed by high target, and it will provide a more stable and real life article fix solution in the hard shuttle segments. The receiver is recording data stream from motherboard and doing quick PPK calculation, then combine PPK results with RK results to reduce drum points. Quasi dynamic is very easy to use, but firstly, you need to make sure your receiver support it. Currently, V90 Plus, RDK5, V30 Plus support it. We suggest using the latest firmware, and you can download it from our website. Connect the receiver with Hathaway. Quasi dynamic can be enabled in additional setting page. And then the icon will be shown in right to bar. But needs to let the receiver be getting RDK correction data for more than 13 seconds. And then quasi dynamic is ready. Keep the receiver being strictly stationary and click, click the icon to start quasi dynamic. And it will take 20 to 14 seconds to finish the initialization and the collection. And there will be a ding dong voice from the receiver. That means the point is collected.
Okay, let's see a video to know the whole proportions. Okay. Okay, so much for this topic. There is a poll for you. Please spare one minute to vote. Okay. Okay, seems like most people want to test it first. Okay, thanks for your vote. Okay, next topic is about, about uh, tears away. Tears away means the ground point still can be collected, even if the receiver is tilted. So how it works? Generally, the receiver gives coordinates of face center. The tilt sensor gives tilt angle and the tilt animus. And it needs to know the distance from face center to the ground point, of course. After getting all this inf information, Hathaway will do the geometric job to work out the coordinates of ground point. By the way, tier 2.0, no need tier sensor. We will talk about it later. So in what kind of situation we need a tier survey? For example, picture A. That point is very hard to collect and it's hard to let the receiver be lively. And the tier survey will make it easier. Picture B, that situation needs you to get that point very fast because there is no, there is so many cars, there is no time for leveling. And the picture C, it's impossible to let the receiver be leveling. And the picture D, 
the point in the under obstacle. So here's the way the memory helpful for their situations. Currently, these receivers support pure sway, but they are with different candles, pure sensor. We land plus and article five, the old mode article five is with e bubble plus magnetic sensor. This is a generation one. Okay, let's talk about the first generation, e bubble plus magnetic sensor. Before start the PLC way, the receiver needs to do calibration with three steps. The calibration needs a low magnetic interference and open air circumstance. And better do it in external working mode because the internal US shape and the internal GSM has a magnetic interference in the cell. And we suggest the battery is full charge and do not power off. All the calibration needs to do again. Step one, electronic bubble calibration. Put the receiver on tripod and make it be perfect, lively and stationary. Go to additional settings page to start calibration. About three seconds, it will be done and it's very easy to success. Step two, orientation sensor calibration. And this step will need more seconds and patience. Rotate the receiver one circle, just like picture A, and then rotate 45 degrees like picture B, and repeat A and B about eight times to finish. And step three, magnetic calibration. Put the receiver on tripod, and make it be perfect, leveling and stationary. And rotate the receiver with a constant and slowly speed. Better less than 20 degrees per second. Let us see a video to see whole calibration clearly. This video is from our partner, Adobe.
Okay, thanks for the video. Thanks, Adobe. So, generally, in what kind of situation need calibration? First, a new receiver, and the first time you see into your survey, you will need it. And the change to a new survey air to tarry and the circumstance changed too much and also need it. The calibration will be expired in 13 days and need to do it again. After the calibration, TSA is ready to go. And TSA has two methods. The first one, normal slope, is very easy to operation. And the second one, corner slope. And get it can give more precise coordinates, but the operation is a little complex. About a normal slope, just tilt and collect. It's fast and easy, but the accuracy is not good. It's not very good. So if you you want uh, you want to make a better accuracy, we can try corner slope. Corner slope will need to collect a point two times with two tilts at muse to give better accuracy. The horizontal accuracy can get three to four centimeter. Okay, let's see a video to see how it's working. Okay, thanks Adobe for the video. Okay, so much for the first generation. Let's talk about uh, the next generation. Tier 2.0. It's no, uh, no need a tier sensor. It's not magic. Do you see real intersection? Tier 2.0 just need to keep shaking the pole, just like the right picture showing. It's like uh, drawing a ball, and the collection will be finished after shaking 50 seconds. Okay, let's tell how it works. The distance from face center to the ground point is constant and it will not change during shaking the pole. Receiver will provide five hertz coordinates of face center during shaking the pole. With these two information, high square will, uh, will work out the coordinates of ground points by real intersection. In other words, high square knows the points on the ball and the radius of the ball. So the ball center can be worked out. It's just a geometric issue. The operation on software is not difficult. Just press the echo and then start shaking the pole. Generates need 15 seconds to finish one point.
Okay, let's see a video how to check the poll exactly. Yeah, it's about 15 seconds to finish that point. So how about the accuracy? If doing the right operation, the horizontal accuracy can get five centimeters. In open circumstances, just tilt 15 degrees and shake into a big circle and it will get better accuracy. In shadow, the second resonance, tilt 45 degrees and check into a small circle, also can get better accuracy because the receiver can face much sky and get more satellites. Okay, so much for tilt 2.0. There's a poll for you. Please spare one minute to vote. Okay, about 16% people already do their vote. And 80% uh, people want to test it first. Okay, thanks for your time and their vote. So how about MU? For now, the new mode, Article 5 support it. With IMU, tear survey is resistance to magnetic interference and is no need calibration. And also it can get very good accuracy. The horizontal accuracy can do two centimeters. So operation on software is not difficult. But before start, the IMU sensor needs to do initialization with three easy steps. First, just get article fix, and then keep the receiver be leveling and stationary for a while. And then check the pole in one direction for a while. After that, Here's the way it's ready to go. So let's see a video to see the whole procedure.
yeah, it's very easy to use. So how fast is MU? Let's see a video to see how it's fast. Yeah, the efficiency will be gradually improved. I think every people will like it. So go back to all tier seven methods. So first generation e-bubble plus magnetic sensor, it needs three step calibration and the horizontal accuracy can get three to four centimeters. The second generation, tilt 2.0. It's no need tilt sensor, just shaking the pole to do tilt survey, and the accuracy can get five centimeters. And the IMU sensor is no need calibration and it's very fast. The accuracy can get two centimeters. Okay. So much for the tier survey, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time. So now it's Q and A time. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Antonis. Can you tell me the question? Hello, George. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello, uh, sir. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. I have a receiver with 100. Uh, does it support policy dynamic function? Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, we 100 not support the quasi dynamic. Only we 13 plus, article 5, and we land plus support it. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. I take it number one. I take okay, it number thank one. You, thank you. Hello. Hello, Yano. Yeah. Hello. Thank you for thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, tilt tilt two point zero survey can support V one hundred. Uh, sorry for for now only V thirteen plus support it. V hundred not not support. Okay, thank you. I have one more questions. Uh, for the I IRTK five uh, IMU survey uh, is it must uh, to calibrate uh, electric bubble is necessary no 
uh, Arctic 5 MU known in the calibration. But there is a. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Yano. Yeah, no. Hello, George. Hello, Ellie. How are you? Yes. Nice to hear from you. I'm not just not to take your time. Uh, I was uh, having a question about the quasi dynamic. Yes. You know, when you are under the trees, you are uh, you are having a big chance that you don't have a fixed solution. Does yes. it? Does quasi dynamic works when you don't have fixed solution, or you should have fixed solution for it to work? Uh, generally, we suggest, uh, we suggest uh, that a receiver can be article fix, but also article flows is also uh, can do quasi dynamic. Okay, what would be the what would be the accuracy when uh, when it is in a flow? Uh, generally, the quasi dynamic is uh, is many uh, improve the reliable of article fix solution, and the accuracy can be two to three centimeter yes what about on the float we don't know that huh? we cannot it's not reliable yeah it depends the circumstance and the correction okay. data. yes okay thank you thank you george thank you thank you Ellie. thank you yeah and thank you people ask a question after turn of the article 5 with mu do i need to do initialization again after tone uh, yes uh, generally after each restart uh, the article 5 need to do the in initialization again yes Yeah, the correction uh, status for the quasi dynamic, no need article fees, float is okay. Okay, thank you for the questions. So, so much for today's uh, webinar. Thank you. We really appreciate your attendance and looking forward to meeting with you in our next webinar. Goodbye from High Target. Have a good day or have a good night.